thank you, Dr. Krishnamurti. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank the Ministry of Food Policy Industries, Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare for this opportunity. And I would like to invite all the esteemed panelists. Uh, I would like to welcome the very one of you, Dr. Shridevi Anpana Singh, Director CFTRI, Mr. D. R. Preni, Nabad, Dr. Palmimutu, Director Nikram, Yogesh Tarat, and Rajesh Kumar. Yeah, yes. Yeah, uh, today's topic for uh, discussion for the panel is leveraging agri ecosystem stakeholders for promotion of food processing uh, sector. We all know that food processing sector requires quality production, timely delivery, and adequate quantity, which is not practically possible for individual farmer. Therefore, one of the prerequisite for a successful food processing is mobilization of farmers and today we have a uh, I'm very happy to uh, welcome Mr. Yogesh Thurat. Um, he is a passionate uh, mobilizer of farmers. He mobilized more than 750 farmers producers companies based at uh, Pune and having a turnover of I'm sure it is not less than 1500 crores. So he will share how exactly farmers producers organizations will contribute for strengthening food processing sector. Then uh, when we talk about food processing sector which is technology and capital intensive, we need to skill the stakeholders, we need to establish the infrastructures, we need to you know uh, develop the logistics. Uh, so for that we need you know the financial. So we have a uh, uh, representative of uh, Samunati, he is a value chain financier, Mr. Rajnish Kumar uh, Sentu, he is a deputy vice president of uh, Samunati, he will share how exactly Samunati is helping uh, you know, uh, the stakeholders who are involved in uh, food processing. Institutions play a very important role because uh, they research, develop the technologies, then they import education to the youngsters and they disseminate the knowledge and they also influence the policy advocacy. We are fortunate to have the heads of two premier institutions in the country working for food processing. Uh, Dr. Pandey Muthu is the director of Niftam Tajavur, National Institute of Food Technology, Entrepreneurship Management and uh, Dr. Shidevi Alpuna Singh he is uh, director of uh, famous CFTRI Central Food Technology Research Institute, Mysore. So I would like to welcome you both to this and I request both the panelists to share your views, what are the activities of, of your organizations and how we can uh, strengthen uh, you know, food processing further, what is the roadmap from your organization. Most importantly, everybody wants again money. So the two key players are sitting on both the sides, one Samunati and on the other side Nabad. It is my privilege to welcome Mr. Premi, general <laughs> manager from Nabad. As you are aware, Nabad is promoting agriculture development including food processing sector. They have very specific programs, they are promoting agribinders and agri startups. So I request uh, Mr. Premi to share more on that. So with this, uh, again on behalf of every one of you, I would like to welcome all the speakers. Each speaker will get uh, 10 minutes at the end. Uh, you know, we have uh, open time for open for discussion. So before uh, I hand over the mic to one of the speaker, I would like to share uh, one or two minutes about my organization, which is also contributing for strengthening extension system for uh, food promotion, uh, food processing, National Institute of Agricultural Extension Management, it popularly known as MANAGE. We are autonomous organization under the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. We are located in Hyderabad. MANAGE is mandated to strengthen extension systems uh, through undertaking uh, some of the activities like training, 
research, consultancy, policy advocacy, organizing international programs, documentation and dissemination. <coughs> and we also play a very important role uh, by working with uh, you know state government in uh, promoting uh, new technologies. It includes food processing technologies also. Every year we reach more than a lakh stakeholders, public and private sector through our different programs. Manage also plays very important role in implementation of Government of India programs. These programs are also very important for uh, strengthening the uh, food processing sector. I will take one or two programs. Uh, Atma Agriculture Technology Management Agency, which is located in a very district and they disseminate all the technologies. See, in one of the recent discussion, we find that all the production technologies are dominating day-to-day dissemination of extension advisories. Why not? So, uh, the food processing technologies. So, this is one of the best platform available in every district, 731 districts. So, uh, this opportunity should be utilized for promoting the food processing technologies. Second uh, important uh, scheme implemented by managers, uh, Central Sector Scheme of Agri Clinic and Agri Business Center Scheme, where unemployed agricultural graduates who want to start their own enterprise, they are given 45 days free training in agri entrepreneurship development and they can submit a detailed project report to banks. They get up to 20 lakh rupees. It also includes 36 to 44 percent subsidy for different groups. We have established around 38,000 entrepreneurs across the country. And many people are uh, contributing for quality production, which is prerequisite for food processing. They are contributing for establishing of infrastructure. Of course, quality, extension, message, dissemination, and many people are also directly involved in food processing. Another important sector which we can look for in future where manage is working is, why can't we transform the input dealers who are located in every villages in this country as micro-entrepreneurs who can contribute for uh, food processing. These input dealers they sell, sell seed, fertilizer, pesticides to the farmers. In majority of the cases, they are also money lenders. So we have started a program called DESI, Diploma in Agricultural Extension Services for Input Dealers. It's a one-year program. Only on Sunday, they go to the nearest dist district headquarters and they learn about best practices in agriculture development. It includes food processing also. And thanks to some of the programs like Agriculture Infrastructure Fund, Prime Minister of Formalization of Micro Food Enterprises, Spurti of MSME Department, FPO Promotion by Agriculture Ministry. These people can make use of all these programs and they can set up food processing units. So, a lot of opportunities are there. Another important area where manage is working is uh, promotion of agri startups. RKB by Raftar is one of the popular program of Ministry of Agriculture. We are today we are working with uh, uh, more than 2,000 agri startups. Uh, we have just started dispersing funds for uh, in terms of grants to budding startups. We are also organizing uh, you know startup awards and many uh, programs educating the university students. So many uh, startups are also working in the areas of you know food processing. I don't want to elaborate more on that. Uh, but these are all the areas where uh, Manage is working. Recently, we have started Manage APO Academy, uh, Farmers Producers Organization Academy, where uh, specific training programs are conducted for CEOs of APOs, the chairman of APOs, the board of directors, and the members. They need different inputs. This is another channel where we can reach, sensitize farmers producers organizations on food processing. Here, I would like to you know, stop and uh, I would like to welcome uh, Yogesh Chorat to share his views on interface between farmers producers organization and uh, food processing sector. Already, I think that has been said by the moderator. 
So I am here to speak about role of pharma producer organizations in the food processing industry. So basically we started in Maharashtra pharma producer organizations 10 years back. At that time we have a lot of challenges, particularly mobilization of the farmers. We need institutions. We need trained human resources, skilled human resources, entrepreneurs. So basically we are talking about entire ecosystem of the agripreneurs or agribusiness industry. And that we are looking at the village level. And even I am thank, thankful to manage and the because I am alumni of the manage. And simultaneously in case of food processing, we implemented village adoption program of Nitin. Dr. Prarabdi is here. I think for three years we tried to develop entrepreneurs at the village level. And yes, there was success of that program. We created the entrepreneurs who are successful right now. But above the entrepreneurs, we are talking about the micro enterprises, it's okay. But for economies of scale, we need institutions and we developed one village level farmer producer company at the village level having 200 plus farmers as a shareholders. But again we identified the challenges of village level enterprises because catchment <coughs> is very very small and sustainability is the biggest question due to business modeling and secondly due to institution management. So business modeling was the crucial factor because whatever cropping pattern is there, raw material requirement is there, if there is some drought situation is there, we are not able to get the raw material. So what about the sustainability of those institutions? Therefore, 2014, we such small farmer producer working at the village level, we came together. And again, that was the motivation and workshop by Manage Hyderabad to promote state level producer companies and we created Maha Farmers Producer Company Limited as a state level business facilitator entity for the farmer producer companies. So 2014 onwards we are looking for some business modeling and what should be the business model to work together at the state level and we identified some commodities. So we have commodity specific approach and particularly in case of Maharashtra 80% around area is under drought condition. So what is the cropping pattern of that geography? We identified pulses, we identified some cereals, some vegetable crops like onion and we started value chain specific and commodity specific approach of all these commodities and uh, for that purpose we got some incubation activities. See ultimately we have idea of creating or building the capacities through value chain handling activities. And unless and until we don't have trained human resources or skilled human resources working at the village level or working at the farmer producer organizations level, our entry into the value chain will be very very difficult. And that's why 2017, likewise today there was great crisis of the pulses and government of India thought that why not to procure the pulses out of the mandis. And we were the people we have network of the farmer producer organizations and we we try to enter into that business. So that was the business with the government. And what was our role? We started only about the collection aggregation of agricultural commodity. So we were very specific. So entry into the food processing should start from the primary processing. Earlier, earlier we were unaware about cleaning, cleaning operations, we were unaware about the packaging operations. So even being farmer, if we were selling our commodity into the markets, we were packing our commodity into some old money bags, we were packing our commodity into some empty cattle feed bags, but not clearly designed jute bags. So being incubation activity, we entered into procurement of the pulses. And what we achieved through that procurement operations? We successfully entered into the value chain as a primary processing stakeholders. So in 2017, we handled around 33,000 metric ton of commodity and around 30,000 farmers were mobilized for getting their commodity at the village level. And later on, that, that activity has been so exponentially uh, high that 
recently we concluded our season and in totality since last four and half years we handled around 6.7 lakh metric ton of commodity and i think worth rupees more than 4000 crore rupees so while looking back what we achieved as i said yes we built the capacities of the farmer producer organizations for primary processing and in primary processing earlier when we were talking about cleaning grading of pulses or cleaning grading of the cereals you will not imagine that our farmers or farmer producer organizations they were simply bringing some sieves and they were putting grains or like that sieving of the sand for construction activities that was the primary interventions through the farmer producer company but later we identified that there is need of mechanization in cleaning grading operations we had set up cleaning grading plants at the farmer producer company level we had set up some small warehouses at the farmer producer company level and due to all these ecosystem arrangement now daily we have capacity to handle 7000 metric ton of commodity through our network of 350 procurement centers which has spread in 170 blocks of maharashtra covering 20 district and total catchment of around 7000 plus villages of maharashtra and on yearly basis we are facilitating more than 1.4 lakh farmers so what happened basically <coughs> farmers even it was very challenging for us to bring the farmers into the value chain or to bring the farmers into the primary processing because as per the directions of uh, pss guidelines we have to procure only fair average quality commodity so even when we are asking farmers your commodity is not fair average quality commodity so farmers were uh, completely angry they were saying that uh, who you are to decide this uh, faq standards so there were disputes even the uh, first personnel who were uh, victim of uh, entire this faq assignment were our quality persons they were written by the farmers why you are checking our moisture people were saying that your moisture is 14% and our requirement is 12% they were not able to understand what is the moisture so we started from the moisture in uh, in case of the soybean commodity there was terminology so farmers were saying that mere soybean mein kitni hawa hai so we will not understand the farmers language so we have to cope up with the language of the farmers so we have same terminology we were talking about the moisture and farmers were talking about some different terminology so we did capacity building of the farmers we did capacity building of the farmer producer organizations and simultaneously simultaneously capacity building of entire value chain stakeholders so in case of agri infrastructure so again uh, we are one of the uh, india's largest buffer stock procurement partner for government of india and uh, in uh, 2019 we handled country's 50% buffer stock of union but you will not imagine where we stored that union we stored that union in 200 villages of maharashtra and quantity was around 40000 metric ton and what was the key other we don't have common facilitation or common infrastructure for storage of the union so we have small small 25 structure 25 metric ton storage structures we are identified because there was no warehousing facilities for the union community and still india is facing the problem of uh, onions right now so we identified storage structures we stored onion over there but when coming to the um, uh, the quality and safety part of the union that was a very challenging task in case of the perishables uh, we are only working in the union community but we have seen the entire value chain and what kind of uh, secondary processing is required for that community for example we are storing uh, onion and around 50% onion is a grade onion 20% is b grade onion and 30% is the net loss so in case of 20% b grade onion for example government of india had procured around 3 lakh metric ton uh, of onion this year so what is the b grade onion b grade onion will be 60000 metric ton and what is the cost of that onion if we are having 20 rupees as the procurement cost then for 60000 metric ton that will be the affairs of around 180 crore rupees so we are wasting those funds due to only the non value addition of that commodity so we are now thinking that what kind of value addition is required particularly why why not drying of that commodity and processing of that commodity so i think need based processing avenue should be opened for the farmer producer company and definitely they will go, go for the same for example if now any farmer producer company have to operate their procurement center then mandatory requirement some checklist is there whether you have primary processing facilities if it is yes then we are moving forward and now at the level 
we are thinking that we are not near the procurement partner for the purchase. Why not to be done processing at the farmer producer organization level? And based on that, some farmer producer organizations had set up some dumpings. But again, challenges are there. We don't have trained human resources to manage the factories. We had set up infrastructure. We had good uh, dumpings, and uh, we had lot of uh, studies for hiring and uh, procurement of machinery and everything. But at the end of the day, we are facing the challenge of managing those enterprises. And I think these are the um, uh, crucial uh, factors for farmer producer organization. But definitely, uh, uh, I think that uh, yes, uh, we spent ten years for collection, aggregation, warehousing, and primary processing of those commodities. And in upcoming years, farmer producer companies are the key or potential institutions for secondary agriculture. So we are uh, looking right now. We had entered the uh, entered into the value chain uh, through gate of primary uh, uh, agriculture, primary processing sector, and now we are at the gate of uh, secondary agriculture. So I think uh, there is uh, our requirement from research institutions and uh, all these partners. Because I will share small uh, example and I will conclude. In case of onion storage infrastructure, uh, uh, we face lot of challenges because there was infrastructure. Uh, designed by state universities was limited to 25 metric ton, and we are speaking that we want storage structure of 1000 metric ton. So what was the idea? For example, this room is occupying only five chairs. We are saying that why not to keep uh, 100 chairs if we are we have more space. But lot of challenges. Even um, there was no technical sanction. We set up project worth rupees 25 crore rupees, and that project does not have technical sanction. Either from state agricultural universities, not from the ICN institutions. Even we approach Milton at that time. So help us what to do. But I think some piloting is required, and we did the we did that pilot. Now government of India is thinking to bring that infrastructure under sub scheme of MIDH. So I think uh, in that case, definitely uh, institutions has played a crucial role, and uh, I strongly believe that uh, believe that in upcoming years. Uh, farmer producer companies are keen to partner with all research institutions for uh, uh, doing a miracles into uh, particularly secondary processing. Thank you. Thank you, Yogesh. Very exciting journey of uh, involving uh, farmers, mobilization, mechanization, linking to market, developing infrastructure, and. Uh, Location specific, commodity specific, value chain development probably these are all few things. But you, you know, ended your statement. Slowly we are moving from primary agriculture to secondary agriculture. So now uh, here is an institution uh, which is working for promotion of uh, food processing technologies, uh, secondary agriculture. What all the ingredient it needs? Uh, probably CFTR is producing. So I request uh, Dr. Shridhar Purna Singh to share her views on this topic. A very good afternoon to all, and I thank the organizers for this opportunity to be a participant in this panel discussion. So uh, thank you for uh, asking about uh, secondary processing. If we talk about, uh, I will tell you a little bit of history about CFTRI. It started in 1950. The reason was it was in the backdrop of the World War II as well as the Bengal famine, when there was no processes available for extending the shelf life or to arrest the post-harvest losses. So India was newly independent, and the government felt that there should be an institute which will address these two topics, as well as to take care of the food and nutritional uh, needs of the population. So this institute was set up in this backdrop, and uh, since then has been working on the various technologies that will address not only malnutrition but also post-harvest losses. Why is it so important? At that time, it was save every grain. India was deficient in uh, production of uh, any kind of food crops, and we were importing. And uh, it's only after the Green Revolution that we became self-sufficient. Today, we are at a stage where we are number one, two, or three in most of the agricultural uh, production. 
So the government is talking about doubling the farmers income, we are talking about uh, vocal for local, so many uh, uh, slogans are there. But unless secondary processing is done, there will not be value addition. If there is no value addition, how can there be demand? If there is no demand, the farmer's income will not increase. Now what exactly is secondary uh, agriculture? We are value adding through processing. Like uh, the previous speaker already said um, about primary processing. But once you do the secondary processing, the value goes up much higher. This could be through baking, it could be through milling, it could be through you know freezing. So many uh, technologies are available today for the processor which can be used either you want to preserve the sensory quality or you want to extend the shelf life or maybe it is uh, more focused on the nutrition part maybe for export with the extended shelf life and so on but today the uh, concept of food has changed tremendously because while we were talking about save every grain, today we are at a position where we are talking about food for nutrition, we are talking about food for health which the recent pandemic has taught us and we are also looking at food as a major concern for environmental uh, uh, damage because agriculture takes up a lot of land, we are using a lot of natural resources, water especially and a lot of food is going waste. In our country, some of the sectors like fruit and vegetables, we are losing up to 30 to 40 percent of the produce. So, in this context, again, they will uh, biodegrade and you get a lot of greenhouse gases and so on, which is again detrimental. So, in this context, uh, secondary processing plays a very, very important uh, role, and uh, not only uh, it will Again, if you look at India, there are 20 agroclimatic zones. You have so many regional produce. Maybe uh, many of them are not even familiar to us. If you go to the northeast, you find so many new uh, uh, kinds of crops. In even in millets, there are uh, jerk steers is very uh, endemic in the northeastern area. None of us have even worked on it. We do not know a lot about it. Coming to food processing again, when you talk about secondary agriculture, you have to think of four definite parameters. The first one is, as rightly put by the previous speaker, is moisture. It is very, very important to know, but each crop is unique and therefore you have to manipulate the moisture to extend the shelf life and prevent losses. And why is that important? They could be sprouting. All of these are living uh, grains or, uh, you know, uh, so they are resp uh, respiring and you have to take care of the moisture content when you are storing it. The second one is the pH. Anytime you want better shelf life, especially in terms of microbial uh, safety, you have to look at the pH. The third thing is the temperature of processing. Again, that plays a very, very important role, but you have to preserve the nutritive content. And the fourth one is probably the use of additives. Today, more and more people talk about food technology as recipe development. They are not really looking at these parameters to understand how the food is behaving on the shelf in the supermarkets. And our institute especially has been working out from ground zero. The very first technology, if you uh, look at it, um, the probably in the year 1950s, we were importing all of infant uh, milk powder and uh, there was no technology, there was no dairy industry existing in India. Everything was imported and uh, there was only buffalo milk available, there was no cow's milk, but our children required milk powder. So uh, this particular institute actually went to the milkmen. They substituted the copper vessels with tinned vessels so that the copper will not leach into the milk and on drying the copper content will get increased into it. And then, today it looks very simple what I am saying but think in the 1950s. And then they brought it to the institute and then they skimmed off a part of the milk because buffalo milk has a lot more fat, a lot more protein in it. It is deficient in certain essential amino acids. And uh, in the infant's stomach, when there is too much of protein in it, 
the curd that is formed due to the stomach acid is so hard that the infant cannot digest it. So a partial skimming was done to remove the fat, buffer salts were added to dilute the protein content, sugar was added and then some fortification was done with the essential amino acids and after that it was dried. This one technology led to the development of the dairy industry in the country and today I don't think there is anybody in this room who has not heard of the brand name Amul. So this is one technology even today is worth 3000 crores. So when you take a liter of milk maybe you pay 50 rupees or 60 rupees depending on which state you are in. But just look at the kind of value addition if you are going for secondary agriculture. Similarly with spice oil, spice oil resins, pioneering work was done simply because you cannot have standards, you cannot have uh, you know uh, the same quality because depending on the season the uh, uh, ingredients will vary, the bioactives will vary. So if you have to have a standard quality you need to do this processing so that on a global market, you will have a chance to compete. So uh, there are five verticals in my opinion when you talk about uh, secondary agriculture. The first is of course technology development. Like I said, we have innumerable number of crops which are either never utilized or only restricted to the local uh, uh, places where they are grown or they are underutilized. And uh, many of us haven't even heard of it, but they could have very good nutritional content or they could have very good market because of the health benefits that they give. So uh, these need to be done and each crop is unique and therefore we need to work on that. That is one vertical. The second one would be the translational research, which means that uh, we need to understand, we see more and more products, especially even in millets I see, uh, the label says, anti-cancer, antioxidant, all kinds of claims are done but there is no real validation scientifically and if we are uh, talking about uh, that we need to uh, actually validate these claims if we want to have a global market. The third vertical probably uh, would be a uh, machine uh, prototype development. Again, uh, especially when you talk about Indian uh, produce, we really have not developed the engineering part. If you look at oil seed crops as an example, when you look at Indian oil seeds, it could be sesame, it could be groundnut, it could be, uh, I do not know, mustard. All of these are very healthy oils simply because we are pressing the oil, we are filtering and we are packing it. All the minor health ingredients are there in these oils. But why are they losing out? The overheads are too high because they are all batch processes and the cake is having too much of residual oil in it which means it cannot be used for edible purposes. Unfortunately, our oil seeds are having too much oil in them so you cannot go for solvent extraction. You have to physically extract these oils. And then the cake is having so much of residual oil that it goes rancid and ultimately it is only useful for animal feed Although the cake is having upwards of 50% of protein in it, which is a very good quality plant protein. So we need to develop the engineering and the scale up to really make use of this. The fourth vertical probably is training and capacity building. Many of our farmers are forced to bring their produce to the mandis physically and it is always exposed to the vagaries of uh, uh, weather and transportation, bad roads and so on, which means that there are losses along the supply chain. So if we are able to train them, if we are able to scale down the machines to an extent where at the farm level or at least at the cluster level they are able to value add to it and then sell their produce, that would be a good thing. And uh, in CFTRI, we have been conducting training courses for farmers, for self-help groups. We have been uh, uh, helping to set up uh, these clusters. We have been helping to identify the specific machinery. Often, there is a mismatch with the capacity and the kind of uh, produce that we are having. So we are trying to develop uh, specific machines which are not very expensive and which are suitable to the local conditions also. 
Then the fifth one is standards. Unless we have good standards and can ensure the food safety, it is very, very difficult for us to really compete again in the global market. Like I said in the beginning, if moisture is not controlled, say you are having groundnut which is actually growing under the soil, there are always pores of uh, aspergillus flavors on that. And if the moisture content is going up, it means that the uh, fungus is going to grow and you are going to have aflatoxin problem. One nut in the entire lorry load is going to still fail European standards, which means that it is a lost uh, cause. So, moisture uh, 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 control is one way of uh, ensuring that this problem will not be there. So, that brings me back to storage. Unless the groundnut is stored very well, well aerated, because it is a breathing entity, there is going to be also moisture that is uh, coming out of the nut as well as carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is going to give a kind of greenhouse effect and the moisture is going, if it is a large heap, there will be moisture that is accumulating which can lead to sprouting, which can give uh, 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 incentive for the fungus to grow. So all of these are uh, things that this institute has been uh, trying to address. And finally, uh, I would like to say that we have also uh, started incubation centers. With the help of government of Karnataka, we do have incubators already in the institute. But we are also actively participating both in the PMFME uh, training as well as we have set up uh, two uh, lines, one for banana and the other one for coffee processing, both of which are the OEOP for uh, uh, Mysuru as well as uh, pork. And uh, we will be having incubators there also and the farmers themselves can come and use our facilities because this is another big bottleneck that we have found that many people are not having the facilities to process. The investment sometimes are too high. So we would hire these uh, machines for them to then do the test marketing and once they are uh, comfortable they can exit. Similarly, the government of Karnataka has given us uh, 22 crores. We have set up nine lines on millets at uh, pilot scale and recently we have got the BIRAC grant and we will be starting with uh, biotechnological uh, uh, incubators. So apart from uh, all of these, uh, we also take up uh, sponsor programs. If you are having an idea and you want exclusivity, you can give us the money and we will run it as a project and give you back the results so that you can have your own uh, concern. And uh, we run short term courses. We have an international school of milling technology where we are training people for the flour mills. <coughs> the reason uh, is that if you look at the industry, I told you there is a lot of losses. But if there is any organized uh, industry which is doing very well, one is the dairy and the other one is the bakery. And the reason is there is trained manpower as well as uh, equipment that is available for these uh, sectors. So the International School of Milling Technology does train people for about 10 months and they are uh, ready to go into the industry and work. So today you have a multitude of very specialized ingredients that are available, be it uh, maida, suji and so on, uh, using different kinds of uh, wheat. And also finally, uh, when you talk, I was talking about environmental concerns, we have to look at circular economy. And so more and more byproducts that are being uh, uh, generated during food processing, we are trying to address that to see how we can save water, how we can utilize these uh, byproducts. Some of them are very, very rich sources of nutraceuticals and molecules which may have either health benefits or they may be very valuable food ingredients, they may be the precursors of food flavors and so on. And uh, we are trying to find that. And uh, also we are trying to use these molecules to see whatever is the health benefit that is uh, <coughs> being attributed to them, whether we can uh, look at the metabolic pathway and validate this as to how it is bringing about that health benefit. 
and then also look at how it can be stabilized in a package it could be encapsulation it could be any other method and then what is the kind of dosage that is required per day per person of a certain age gender and the kind of lifestyle they are leading so that it will really uh, replace medicine so it could be a lifestyle related disease like diabetes or cardiovascular disease it could be even people who are autistic or it could be to help people to relax because we are under a lot of stress today especially modern uh, thing so having said all this why is it important that we do what we do is like it was told r and d is extremely important the government is trying to help the farmers trying to help the especially msme sector and this is the role that r and d uh, institutions have to play so that the time is reduced between what is available and what is uh, possible so that we uh, are able to contribute to the economy 40% of the rural uh, uh, people in our country are dependent on agriculture 40% of our population so if we are able to generate these uh, kind of jobs it would be wonderful and uh, they would stop uh, migration uh, into the cities thank you I have a lot more to say, but I stopped. Thank you, Doctor. Version of technology is <coughs> only thing it has to reach the needy uh, people. But one of the important program which I liked in uh, CFTRI is you sensitizing uh, farmers from different districts under ODOP on particular technologies. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Technologies, many new ideas are coming, out of the box ideas are coming, agri startups are coming, especially in the field of secondary agriculture and food processing. So they need money. So Samunati is one of the organizations which are, uh, you know, uh, promoting not only agri startups uh, but also innovative ideas in uh, food processing technologies. I request uh, Rajnish Kumar Sen to. to share his experiences in this direction. Thank you, Peter Sakadatra, sir, for giving you the opportunity to talk about uh, the financial intermediation for the Greek startups. So I will quickly talk about uh, Samnati. Samnati is one of the largest tech startups in the country and we largely address the financial gap with the like uh, again private and particularly the farmer collective or facing. So we work with the other objective of like middle class <coughs> but for a small order and whenever the local value chain market has to be there. And we have a three step approach. We basically focus on education that is the strength of the various forms of farmer collective. Second, we are talking about the like market linkage because market linkage is very crucial. It also includes the food processing part because uh, I will talk to later on this uh, food processing industry sector. And third is the like advisory support. Uh, this is not only related to uh, like the crop advisory, but also related to like the DPR for like uh, getting various uh, like uh, its corporate schemes uh, which are dedicated for uh, like the promotion of the food processing industry, particularly for the farmer producer organizers. So uh, when I'm talking about the food processing industry, like uh, the food processing uh, sector is like uh, not something very new. Uh, uh, for the like Indian citizens, it has been in the culture of our uh, like citizens uh, since long. And uh, when we remember the like uh, uh, the periods of uh, uh, this Asoka and then uh, uh, the Mughal dynasty period, like people used to like uh, uh, like uh, uh, procure the spices and uh, supplying it to like uh, other countries and other uh, like uh, uh, countries. And uh, even like they were doing some form of like. Uh, Processing and in this way, like this, uh, has been in the culture <coughs> of uh, our uh, uh, like uh, country. When we are talking about uh, like uh, the food processing sector, first we know that like uh, we are the largest like uh, producer of the like agriculture and like producers. Even like we are the top five uh, like uh, producers of most of the like uh, uh, popular like agri producers, fruit and vegetables. So we are like the largest producer of milk, similarly for we are the largest producer for banana, also for mango, second largest for like fishery. But still like when we are talking about like export, uh, when we are the second largest uh, are a producer of vegetables, we are like uh, almost 15 to 16 like uh, supplier of the vegetables. Similarly when we are talking about milk and uh, milk product, uh, we are the 46th uh, uh, like, uh, 
the exporter. So uh, this is the challenge uh, which like uh, the like uh, uh, food processing industry is facing. And uh, uh, first I will talk about the significance and I will talk about the challenge part. Uh, third I will talk about the like, potential with the food processing industry as well. And uh, in the last I will maybe talk about like what Samrati like doing largely in helping the farmer producer organizers to transform uh, their journey to become a great size in the coming future because that is very crucial uh, as long as we are not like promoting the original growth and like helping the like uh, decentralized uh, like uh, units to become like uh, uh, the powerhouse of the processing they will not able, able to contribute in making our country the uh, export uh, uh, like powerhouse uh, in the coming uh, future because uh, uh, because of the changing life is time the changing consumer behavior or uh, to the public like people are becoming more uh, like uh, conscious and also uh, like uh, more organization is happening and similarly like people are looking for like more uh, uh, I can say uh, the convenient food packaged food ready to eat food ready to serve food ready to cook food so there is like high demand uh, for uh, like uh, processed food uh, across the globe and consumers are becoming more like sensitive also to uh, like uh, get high quality producers uh, at optimum rate and uh, and we are in this like open and like globalized uh, and interconnected <coughs> world so everybody has access to uh, uh, like uh, the producers uh, all which are having high quality at the same time they are available at a better price uh, but uh, when we are talking about the like uh, Indian uh, like startups uh, Largely, when we talk about the startups, the startups are mainly like uh, my previous speakers have talked about, like uh, uh, they, they are playing critical role in the modern processing because traditional processing everybody is aware of, and largely it starts with the private sector and the tertiary part. Tertiary to an extent, when it is having with uh, like commercial value, and also like uh, when we are talking about like uh, making it more uh, like uh, uh, value added and uh, it will for uh, like uh, the human and uh, uh, like. Uh, Animal, uh, then it is having uh, more uh, uh, sense uh, in terms of uh, like uh, becoming the part of the modern processing. So in, in the like, uh, modern processing, uh, largely uh, uh, like based on the like uh, the potential which the food processing industry has got. Uh, first is like uh, uh, when we say like uh, uh, talk about the industrial investment for each one. So uh, in other industries, uh, when you invest, there the job is of like for those like four to five people, but when we talk about the this uh, like food processing industry, there's the opportunity uh, to create like more than eight jobs per one crore in that you invest. Uh, why? Because this is like uh, high labor intensive and low technical skills are required in this industry. And even like government is like uh, uh, promoting this automated route or like bringing the foreign direct investment, investment those investments are also <coughs> coming because the global demand is there and as for the, as the CAGR like uh, uh, the uh, export demand is growing by like 4 to 5 percent for the processed food uh, because of the convenience and the packaged food that we are looking for. Uh, so like uh, there is a huge opportunity for the uh, startups to focus on these uh, uh, like uh, 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 like processing of the like uh, suitable uh, and uh, potential like uh, value chains uh, which are having uh, the high demand not in our, uh, in our country but also across the like uh, uh, global uh, like world is the priority and uh, uh, now mainly I will talk about the challenge part. The challenge part is the industry that facing by previous speakers have already talked about. Uh, first is the like low cost competitiveness which the like uh, the agnistics are facing uh, and I will explain that in detail like what is happening that uh, our uh, cost of production particularly in the farm is very really high as compared to other countries because if we know that in the western like, world they have the high subsidized agriculture and they have the like more innovative technologies and the farming is also highly mechanized but in our uh, like uh, country where uh, like we say that uh, India lives in uh, like uh, village and like almost 86 percent are uh, are the small and marginal farmers which constitutes like almost like uh, 40 crore like farmer population, 40 to 15 crore farmer population. So here uh, like uh, uh, when the startups are like procuring the produce from the farmers, it is becoming like cost intensive for them and they really struggle to compete with the like, global market. Definitely like in the Indian market, market they like compete but when they the obviously export the produce, they are facing the challenge. Second is the like uh, brand issue. The, 
branded but very critical. We know that in our, most of our households, the, the foreign brand names are becoming very popular, and uh, few uh, like startups have been able to like uh, go uh, to go out of the threshold, and like uh, they are also making mark in the like uh, world. But uh, still, like uh, this brand building has to happen, and how the country can contribute in a big way to uh, uh, another uh, like uh, common brand uh, is given higher emphasis. But like a lot has to happen in like, building the brand part. The third is the like, <coughs> lack of the like advanced technology, machinery, and also the like warehousing. Even the roads and infrastructure are not very supported. We are talking about the mega food park, but largely they are in the coastal area and in the like uh, southern part of the country. And uh, when we compare the like road, our roads have the capacity of almost like uh, carrying the load of 16. Two metric ton uh, of load, and when you compare with uh, like the US and other countries, they have the capacity to carry like almost like uh, 36 to 38 uh, <coughs> metric ton load. And even like uh, the trucks in our area, we know the traffic condition, the population, and uh, like road condition, even like because of the weather, we struggle. So, logistics so we know very well. Though we are thankful to that this Padhano Trigati Sakti and IP skills, but still, like, and we are also thankful to like Gadi uh, Kaliji for like, giving a special focus on like constructing roads across like uh, uh, the country and like making the like various uh, like districts uh, of the different states well connected, but still, like, uh, only 2% highways are uh, like really dedicated to like uh, ensure this trade movement happening in the country. So, that is also a challenge. And uh, when we are talking about uh, like the uh, old extension the warehouses, uh, there is a uh, the demand of like constructing almost like six to one million uh, uh, metric ton of these warehouses. I guess that we have the capacity of only 30 metric ton. So there is a wastage of almost like uh, uh, I can say one third of the produce is the country door. And here there is the requirement of like doing this public public partnership. Uh, yeah, which will ensure uh, not only the ability of the storage yeah. warehouses, modern uh, like infrastructure, and it will really push to the uh, like uh, opportunity for the startups to come forward and really <coughs> like, uh, contribute in making uh, country uh, like uh, export powerhouse in the coming future. Uh, the next is uh, uh, like uh, uh, the uh, the poor uh, this food hygiene like laws uh, which our country has got and uh, even that, that is giving the opportunity to like uh, compromising startups to negotiate on the quality part and uh, sometimes it creates big problem of uh, export of like mangoes and non basmati and basmati rice and other producers. So how we will have the like stringent laws happening for ensuring the like quality standards which will help us to build our back globally. So that is also uh, like uh, uh, focus point which uh, the startup should uh, uh, think of. Apart from that, these days like new point is coming, uh, which is the like uh, how this uh, uh, like facility requirements can be like in the light uh, as for the like, global uh, requirements and even like uh, the, the like uh, industries uh, who are producing these like edible and like cosmetic and products are meeting the ethical and social like uh, requirements. So this is also becoming critical uh, for the like, produce to qualify the like uh, international market standards uh, and once our industry are like uh, ensuring the compliances of the sustainability requirements, ethical and social like, requirements, uh, the global consumer will be the like, key to like uh, procure our produce. And uh, now maybe we talk about like what are the like uh, uh, possible uh, like opportunity uh, which the like, startups uh, uh, will uh, have in place which will really help them to uh, like uh, create more uh, like employment and really like uh, add in like increasing the share of uh, India in the like uh, food processing export market. So first is like uh, how uh, the like uh, uh, the government particularly uh, the primary uh, the like, public and private actors and like the macroeconomics uh, can contribute in like making some of the like uh, dedicated and uh, like potential value chain which have the opportunity to have a higher growth uh, to uh, really like, work up with the PPP or the private partnership more. Here like you can think of uh, the like project funds also because this will help us in reducing the low cost uh, uh, which the, uh, the high cost of the numbers are very like uh, uh, producing the so apart from that, uh, like uh, the government can contribute in uh, like helping the 
this uh, like brand building uh, uh, for the local like various uh, like, uh, <coughs> startups are growing or like uh, uh, the like uh, these uh, government technical institutions uh, the NIFTA and the FTI and the NIC are and others can work closely with the like uh, the agri startups and the farmer producer organizations which are very important because you know the like, R and D and the like uh, the industry actors if they are not working together. So they will be not able to understand uh, like what is the like uh, uh, gap in terms of like scaling up some of the produce which are tested in the lab. Uh, and when you are like scaling up uh, in the like larger geography, then you face the issue of uh, the quality part. And uh, uh, apart from that, uh, we can think of like the compliance part, which I talked about. Uh, apart from that, uh, I will talk uh, mainly about like what Samrati is doing. Samrati is basically like addressing the working capital gap, which I have talked about. So we are working in like over 22 states. We have uh, given finance to like more than 3,500 FPOs across like these 22 states. And uh, apart from that, we are also like providing finance to the like, these startups. So we are working in the whole upstream and downstream supply chain. And uh, in the recent uh, uh, like uh, uh, era, uh, what we have uh, so been focusing on like identifying this. Uh, uh, like a uh, matching grant requirement, matching basically matching fund, fund requirement for the various schemes which uh, uh, like FPO are keen to like away uh, under this uh, AIF and AHAT schemes, right? even under PMFT scheme. So uh, like they are looking for like uh, when the government is saying that you have to uh, like give your 25 percent contribution. So we have this like community equity infrastructure mode uh, which is dedicated for uh, like the farmer producer organizations. We are giving them that support. Uh, which help them to uh, add their matching fund and in this way like we are uh, really helping the farmer producer organizers to become aggregated prices and in the coming future <coughs> they can also uh, like contribute in making uh, this modern uh, like processing uh, happening uh, in the distance like okay so thank you thank you Rajnish now we can uh, want to ask the farmer or son of a farmer that uh, uh, whether your son you want to, to uh, I know, take into the farming, he will simply say no. Even the person he will not, you know, see, uh, I mean, agree to go for agriculture. So that is because uh, our, uh, I mean, uh, we have been grow, uh, growing in this system. So uh, this agripreneurship can play a vital role in this. And NABAD is actively involved in, you know, promoting agri uh, business, agripreneurship uh, uh, in entire uh, ecosystem. Basically, the agripreneur, uh, agri what they can do is they can bring in, you know, their innovativeness, technology, and they can bring a change and, you know, convert this vast raw material which we are having, uh, you know, uh, in agriculture uh, to, you know, value-added products and uh, uh, services which uh, they can offer. Uh, recently, we have completed a study with the Ministry of Food Processing Industries. Uh, actually, we have a subsidiary, Nabad Consultancy Services which offer um, consultancy services in the field of agriculture and rural development. So we were actually assisted with the ministry to conduct the study on the post harvest losses uh, across the uh, entire you know, agricultural crop. Uh, uh, the report is recently submitted. So we have uh, seen that you know, this post harvest losses are, uh, if we take uh, milk as members telling that you know, well set uh, value chain is there, so it is around the less than 1%, around 8 or uh, 6%. To as high as you know 15 percent in some of the fruits, so uh, we are actually wasting. Uh, that is only I am talking about post harvest losses which start from the farm till it reaches you know the retail sector. So after that again, uh, if you go by there are not much studies in India, but the retail sector or uh, consumption level the losses are more than 17 percent. So put together it becomes 30 percent of the total losses. So one third of food which we are producing is lost. So if that that quantity and we have tried to you know, even estimate it in monetary terms. So it is something around 1.5 lakh crores which we are wasting every year. So that is the you know issue which actually uh, actually give the opportunity. Basically though it is an issue but then any uh, any issue is basically an opportunity for the entrepreneur to come forward and you know use this use wastage and uh, uh, convert it to value added products and uh, you know uh, make uh, headway into this sector 
and uh, uh, when we were studying, uh, I mean, when I was studying that time, we used to say that uh, India is only processing one percent, but now we are at around eight to ten percent. So there is a lot of progress happening, which we also found in the study, because we, what, when we compared it with the uh, previous studies undertaken by CFET and all, there is considerable reduction in post harvest losses. So technology is evolving. We are importing technology, we are developing technology. So there is no dearth of technology. CFPRI, NIF10, there are two NIF10s now. There are so many other institutes. Agriculture University, all, almost all states they have agriculture universities. They are developing technologies and technologies are there and these, these are getting transferred. But then again, uh, the question is how much it is you know, required to you know, feed our 1.4 billion population. How much food we need to produce in future. So we need to think about that and then think about agripreneurship. Uh, I mean, motivate our generation to come forward and uh, uh, you know, invest in uh, this sector. Uh, of course, challenges are there. Uh, all, already uh, previous speakers, they have told so many challenges. But challenges will always be there and there, there will be opportunities as well. So uh, we can uh, see that now people are becoming very health conscious. So, so many projects, even uh, so many uh, startups, they are coming into this sector. They are coming for you know uh, products like uh, uh, recently I was uh, uh, I mean I, I had a friend who is now uh, who is producing cold pressed oil. It is nothing but the oil which we used to you know uh, produce uh, uh, in a traditional way uh, earlier. So people are uh, talking about that and they are switching over to the traditional uh, food sector. There are many other examples. Uh, nowadays we are going for private, uh, many I know, uh, research is going on probiotics. Everybody is, I know, uh, nowadays uh, uh, I mean having so many health issues, especially uh, stomach related issues. So people are suggesting why don't you go for a probiotic. And you will find in the market, we are having certain products which are available, uh, which are food products. Uh, uh, probiotic curd you will find from Britannia and so many other people in Mother Dairy they are having. So that kind of products are coming up. Uh, so there is no dearth of products. We can find number of products which are, you know, um, uh, even uh, uh, I was uh, reading one article uh, from uh, uh, I think uh, SOCM or some uh, industry association. They are actually uh, saying that now people are trying some startups are trying for this uh, producing milk without uh, meat without uh, any uh, any uh, I mean killing of animals in laboratories uh, laboratory itself it can be produced from stem cells so that kind of technologies are available for the startup to come up uh, in this sector and uh, I think already uh, many thing, uh, many people have uh, told about startups and all uh, so I will not uh, go deep into that but simply I just want to tell that there is no dearth of uh, technology. There is no dearth of uh, you know funding. So funding, uh, see any uh, any venture require uh, funding. Funding is the major source. So uh, the entrepreneur has to bring his own capital. That is uh, promoter's contribution, uh, contribution, and it is generally 10% uh, to 25% uh, uh, they have to bring up for it. And remaining they can generate uh, or they can mobilize from the banking sector. Um, uh, there are uh, private sector bank, public sector banks are there they can uh, provide you loan. Then uh, we have uh, non-banking financial institutions, we have cooperative banks, we have regional rural banks. So, so many types of institutions are already there. Then we have uh, all India financial institutions like CDB, NABARD, Exim Bank. For each sector there is an uh, institution which uh, actually catered to the requirement of this. Then uh, we have, uh, uh, I think uh, everybody may be knowing about this mudra. Uh, mudra PM Mudra scheme, which is uh, under uh, this uh, CDB, uh, actually uh, basically though uh, it is through banks only. Uh, so there they have they, they can provide loans up to uh, 10 lakh rupees. It starts from 50,000 to then uh, 5 lakh and up to 10 uh, 10 lakh they can provide and it is collateral free. So that uh, that loan actually is given without any collateral and uh, they can I know go for that uh, uh, credit guarantee from uh, CGT MSE. So uh, uh, that funding is available. Then uh, there is another scheme, uh, uh, Stand Up India by Government of India. It was launched, and it is for SCST beneficiaries and uh, women. Each branch has to, you know, uh, basically uh, actually give loan to either uh, either one of the not either but one SCST beneficiary or one woman. 
so it, uh, it can be from 10 lakh to 1 crore uh, they have to give the loan here they, definitely the collaterals and all those issues are there but then they can avail loan and uh, start their venture then NABAD is also a uh, partner in that uh, we provide uh, technical guidance uh, that kind of uh, projects then uh, uh, then micro credit is available uh, RBI has given the definition that if uh, a family income is around 3 lakh rupees less than 3 lakh rupees they can be given micro uh, loans and uh, you can uh, I mean one can assess this uh, credit limit uh, whatever monthly income you have 50% of that uh, I mean uh, EMI has to be 50% of, the, of that uh, monthly income that much loan accordingly you can get as a micro credit you, you can form self help groups uh, that is another way of looking at it around uh, uh, you know um, uh, 10 to 20 people can come together form a group it is basically based on certain uh, Panch Sutra wishes that they have to mobilize deposits they have to do regular meetings uh, so do, uh, I think we have seen most of us have seen SAG products so they are actually here are so many uh, people might have put uh, some stalls so we can actually get the uh, these people can come together and form uh, I mean they can uh, produce uh, uh, products and uh, sell them in the market uh, there are number of schemes for self help groups then there is another area where we can form joint liability groups which NABAD is promoting in a way basically uh, uh, we also support the agency who uh, actually promote this uh, this uh, JLG joint liability group it is a group of 5 to 10 people basically uh, see main problem getting loan is the collector or they will ask you that you provide your uh, fixed, uh, fixed assets or some uh, gold or something as a security then only they will give loan because they have to be uh, they have to secure their loans otherwise uh, because that is again the public money which they are actually deploying so uh, they will uh, ask for uh, certain uh, uh, collaterals and all but if you are forming a joint liability group so each person stands guarantee uh, for the other person so that way you can avail loan uh, that uh, basically through banks we are uh, promoting this scheme so these are basically loan products I was telling about now there are uh, grant, uh, grant products where you know, so um, uh, mainly the government of India, Ministry of Food Processing Industries, they have the Tamarela scheme, PM, uh, uh, Sampada scheme, uh, Kisan Sampada scheme, where five, six schemes are there. One is Mega Food Park, Nabad is also actually involved in that scheme. We are basically providing funding for Mega Food Park, and there is one uh, cluster uh, development scheme uh, that uh, 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 food processing clusters uh, development scheme. Uh, that uh, that also uh, we, are, we are actually funding. So basically, uh, yeah, they th we provide uh, loan which is affordable, affordable credit to this mega food park and the uh, individual units which are set up. Even uh, it is available today to private uh, entrepreneur. Nabad essentially was a refinancing agency. We have been giving loan to the uh, banks uh, or we were giving actually refinance to the bank against any loan they are extending to agriculture and. Uh, uh, rural areas. So uh, now uh, in this case we have been directly given to the uh, companies who are setting up the uh, food park and food business, uh, food processing business units in this particularly mega food park or designated state government uh, designated food parks or these uh, uh, clusters uh, whatever uh, they are promoting. In addition to that they have that whole chain scheme and uh, they, have, they also have uh, uh, another scheme for uh, you know um, uh, backward and forward in cases Agri infrastructure fund also somebody talked about. Then uh, there is one PMFME scheme which is running. Uh, there you also have uh, subsidy. So all these uh, subsidies, uh, I know grants are ranging from uh, five crore to uh, you know up to fifty crore in case of mega food park. So I think uh, uh, all all those scheme detail you can have. But then I just wanted to give an idea that there are lot of opportunities in terms of uh, uh, funding uh, to these schemes. And uh, then. Uh, there are guarantees also available. Uh, one guarantee I have already told CGTMSC. NABAD also provides, uh, uh, we have one uh, subsidiary which is uh, NAB Sarakshan. Uh, basically, we provide the guarantee to the APUs. So, APU, uh, we earlier were discussing. Uh, APU also you can uh, form basically, in, APU can be formed in the form of a company or uh, uh, we can uh, form a society or it can be registered as a society basically. So uh, these type of institutions and there NABAD provide the credit guarantee. So they of can get loan uh, without any collateral. 
and uh, that too up to 1 crore there is uh, uh, one limit around 85 lakh uh, of the loan is uh, covered under that guarantee and uh, if it is more than uh, 1 crore uh, project cost then uh, we, can, we provide guarantee up to 1 crore so this is uh, available so guarantees are available loans are available you can mobilize equity again equity you can bring from your own sources there are venture capitalists available in the market they they if a good uh, project is there they will come forward and support you uh, from uh, with equity support so all these institutions are available for uh, funding i think uh, uh, um, uh, there is no dearth of money as far as this uh, definitely if you are a first generation uh, entrepreneur getting uh, institutional fun, uh, finance is a bit difficult so you need to start your own little bit maybe one or two years uh, you need to struggle uh, it is i'm not saying that you may not totally get but uh, suppose if your dealing is good with the bank you may get uh, uh, some some support especially this mudra loan can be easily taken uh, or uh, uh, governments uh, uh, government grants are available so we can start it and then once you are you know you have one or two years balance sheet with you then uh, your credit rating goes up and uh, you simply can uh, go ahead and expand your business so these are these are the uh, i think uh, major areas uh, 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 i think uh, i am taking more time uh, but uh, if any question we can uh, further discuss ha ah, there are few more schemes nabard which we i would like to release nabard uh, does lot of promotional role which we does through uh, non government organizations basically and uh, like uh, uh, for uh, especially in food processing sector we provide trainings we have one uh, nav skill portal where uh, these people they apply for uh, giving trainings so we provide funding to the banks and uh, some ngos uh, for providing training in uh, so that is for all other things but for this also they uh, we can uh, i mean uh, uh, any food processing skill based trainings that can be taken through nabard so these are all uh, schemes and uh, definitely i think uh, you can visit our website nabard.org uh, you will get some clear idea about nabard what nabard is doing it's a very big organization uh, we have a role in uh, almost all agricultural rural development thanks a lot thank you dr pregi uh, lot number of programs are there only thing they have blended up technology entrepreneurship and management in single institution that is the uniqueness we would like to listen to you thank you good evening to all of you sabka namaskar when this uh, world food india even 2023 was uh, proposed and uh, we are in the ministry so this is the mofi ministry of food processing industries uh, is uh, actually is the running the show is organizing this event uh, one of the important uh, contributors for this uh, program are uh, two nifters and we were uh, discussing about what are the technical sessions see this is a expo is for the general public and some uh, b2b and b2c uh, events <coughs> no you can make the networking the sessions are uh, no we have made them at least are somewhere around 40 45 uh, eight uh, sessions we were discussing who should be in, you, know, in, you know invited who should be the moderator how we should be doing it we have sat many times and finally we had a uh, one uh, session for uh, uh, agri stakeholders ec ecosystem stakeholders for promoting food processing industry this is the title of this session if you really see food is everybody's need and where from it comes it comes from the production system mainly uh, yeah, from crop based system sometimes we include even fish also as a crop fish also is a crop and uh, we have a agri ecosystem and then we in the system who are the stakeholders if you really analyze main producers are farmers and other even you can add other producers as well Uh, other than uh, farmers even the bigas they have a fish processing now fish production system and other things they also come under farmers these are the primary stakeholders 
<coughs> from there who is the next the last stakeholder we the consumers between this there are many many people starting from that that end you can see that there are uh, people with a lot of cash mahalakshmi then we have a, a person who aggregates all these farmers farmers producer organization these are all essentially our this program processing for prosperity this theme of this world food india is meant for this particular slogan processing for prosperity processing you know just for the production system although i want to come from a, a nar system national agriculture research system where we are really the base producers of the all food raw material we found over the years over 50 60 years of the green revolution white revolution blue revolution and again second wave many things we found that we have done really significant uh, uh, achievement in production system already some speaker told uh, we are number 2 number 1 in which which are the commodities i can go on but not that important in this for this session there are other sessions for this we produced but did the farmers get their uh, due uh, uh, no uh, revenue uh, in net income out of it no where we really missed the bus in the value chain system if you see whether it is a good value chain or there is a value chain with uh, some kind of a problem no a uh, broken linkage if you see in that value chain producer is not happy producer is not happy because he is not getting remunerative price and then you see the end of the chain consumer always depending upon and what uh, today what price the tomato sells he is happy if it is less than 10 rupees if he is and he is unhappy when it is 90 rupees or 100 rupees that means the, in this value chain the producer and the end, end person no he is not happy many a time many a time in the process in the in between chain more or less they are really happy more or less i am telling you who are the next stakeholder next stakeholder is the processor you know we can start from uh, uh, transporter then we have a storage storage kind of kind of people then we can say the uh, 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 stock holder wholesale stock holder or a wholesaler retailer all those people come under other uh, stakeholder then we have a, another stakeholder process then then again goes to the marketing chain and in between for every every uh, level we have a finance chain right in this where do if the, if you see that my topic was leveraging existing institutions existing institutions how we can support this food processing sector that's what what i am supposed to speak then i i was searching not just what i was searching what really i can talk about then if i if i if i looked into agricultural food and allied institutions the landscape of this country i i was just astonished no we have i have grouped into six type of institutions we have apart from the financial institutions i'm telling you only about the a uh, regular academic research in this level of institution we have an icr which has 104 institutions more or less all the institutions all the you know i i have the uh, different classifications as well four deemed universities 68 institutions then the uh, 14 uh, uh, <laughs> network i i can i did uh, between the space like this there are 104 institutions in icr and more or less they are involved in as a stakeholder they are involved in this system what this institution can really deliver to this no to this food processing sector i was analyzing this then we have a really very good institution we have one one institution uh, central institute of post harvest uh, processing uh, post harvest processing engineering and technology the the post harvest losses the, the, the things which you are it is often is mentioned there was done including at the grassroots level done by me two times yes at lower level uh, st- no professor i was doing at that time that whatever the figures were quoted all were derived after very tremendous work put by that particular institute and in, uh, under that institute across the country 45 research stations on a 45 commodities 36 research uh, uh, aicr is already a coordinated research project 
They done this work two times. I was the part of it. When when we did, you now people were quoting 30% loss, 40% loss, nothing. We have done with every channel, starting from uh, you no know, harvesting, threshing, then uh, transportation, wholesale st storage, retailing, and then processing level, consumer. Every level we found the post office losses in the strategic form. You know we developed so many to develop the. The survey performer itself it took six months. With the, you know, then we did and we found that that is not that kind of a figure which is post office losses in this country. Of course, the third time was done by Naba. Two times we did, right? The highest loss was in Goa fruit, 17 or 16 or 17 percent, if I remember. Milk is only one person, only one person. This is a physical loss, not the qualitative loss. Qualitative loss also we look into when we are processing food. Bad raw material cannot bring you best output. Best product, final product cannot come from a bad raw material. Raw material may be physically there. If the quality is not good, then it cannot give you delivery with the best ketchup. If your tomato is not good, you will not get the best ketchup. That means in that post harvest losses we have not considered qualitative uh, degradation. Right? What I am telling you, the institution is involved in this. The institution is, no, it is not actually clearly visible what we are doing. Suppose if you go to, I, I told ICR, or not, if you go to state agriculture universities, there are 63 in number. Almost under them there are many colleges. Everybody is doing, is a stakeholder, they are working for the stakeholder. Maybe KVK, maybe there are uh, uh, food technology programs, our uh, hope science uh, programs and many, many other programs. They are also stakeholders in this institution wise. Then we have a CSIR, is a very big organization and the madam is the representing there. Out of some, you know, we, they have about 37 uh, uh, labs and then uh, I found that 39 and then centers that I, I think it is called outreach centers. And in that, at least four institutions are primarily, you no, know, they have a very big role to play in this uh, processing, food processing sector. CFTR is the uh, uh, is our brand in this country, and they are the main institution where who were doing for a long, long time. Niptums came later. Of course, they, they have a NIST, and they have other two couple of institutions as well. They are also in this line. We have then there is another group, Department of Biotechnology. They have only one institution who is doing with the food, dealing with food. Uh, 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 but they are supporting many programs in many other institutions for the food sector. That we have to consider. Then we have Indian Council of Medical Research. That is another big group of institutions, 31 institutions. In that, National Institute of Nutrition, who, from whom the values we always take, that is comes under ICMR. What we have, uh, uh, no, in the last one decade, we are mostly talking about FSSA. No, who, uh, who is the regulator now? It comes under uh, 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 the, the Indian system only, medical, uh, Indian Council of Medical Research, that system only. Then there are other key players. I, I can include many, the, our uh, NIFTAMs. NIFTAMs, we have two NIFTAMs, one at Tanjavur and Kun Kunli. We are uh, coming under Ministry of Food Processing Industries. We have many NITs and IITs working in this field. So we, what I really found that what as an institution, how we can leverage this, uh, you no know, promote uh, in food processing sector. That's what my thinking was. Then I found that if I really explain what we are doing in NIFTA, that really covers everything. The main aspects, you know, what we do in uh, NIPTUM, that's what, that's how it was uh, planned in the Ministry of Food Processing Industries. We have uh, uh, at least five different areas we are really contributing and that infusion continue to do that work. We need, say so suppose somebody climbs and recently we had a one uh, very big issue of uh, finding food inspectors in different, uh, different uh, cities. When you find food inspector, you give it to your BA, BSC man, anybody, that you really they cannot do the job. You need the capacity, you know, you need the trained manpower. Hajar is very important. So the institution like NIPTAM and many, many uh, universities where technology program, program 
we are de you know, developing human resource for doing this job. There is a stakeholder in promoting this food sector. This is the institutional job. We need the best trained manpower, best food inspector, best quality controller, no controlling person in an industry. We need a human resource. No, that is what we are doing very well. And we have a big food technology program. There are many, many universities have now. And uh, that is a flagship program. And in terms of Institute of National Importance, we have a role to play. And uh, we have built a curriculum for that to suit the industry and the, all the stakeholders uh, in this sector. And uh, of course, the capacity building is... I uh, will come to that little bit later. Next one is technology development. There are five verticals. Our madam told five verticals. Very important for this sector. I just... Uh, uh, I again tell you, technology development, translational research, machinery development, then training and capacity building, and food standards, development of food standards and safety aspects. In all these verticals, whatever the uh, uh, director of uh, safety director, you need manpower. You need to train manpower. This is the duty of these institutions. This is the duty of the institution. They should find the best curriculum. I know it will be best in the among in the globe. And then we have to train the manpower for, to, to suit that particular aspect. Then second one is when we, we found a lot of food <laughs> processing entrepreneurs are coming up. Right. In that Suppose we have all production, all pulse produced in this country is processed by three or four companies. Three or four companies only. Can they give employment to the large population like this in country? Not at all. We need small and micro processes. Not only big process, big process also required. But small and micro level processes. If, if, that, if that is the case, do they have support system for them? See, suppose I want to start a food, food uh, uh, no, business uh, in a small or a micro level. Then I need some, now I have to test my technology, I test my you know, uh, think, uh, thought process somewhere. I cannot put capital immediately. You need some incubation facility. And Nifton is doing that very well. We have at least seven, seven, eight incubation you know, lines for say chocolate processing or a bakery processing line or a, in a drying line, a fruit and vegetable processing line, like this, yeah. millet processing line, grain processing line. These are all the incubation lines where they can test the technology directly. They need not invest any money. We hand over them, we give all kinds of training and if they are very confident, then they can start that business. We are giving, you know, it is a very you know, meager uh, uh, fee. Okay. Another two minutes. Right. Then we have a. This is the facility. What we are contributing to this uh, system. Then we have, we have a consultancy services. There are recently. Just just an example. Naga Foods. They are making a flour, a chakki hatta. They found that lot of problem with flour when they were stored. Immediately they called, they came straight away, came to the uh, institution. Then our uh, scientists went, they went up with the solution and they solved that problem. See, this kind of a consultancy is very important. Industrial consultancy, or for FPO or industry, it doesn't matter. We do the consultancy service. We know, we, we involve in the problem, maybe we charge you a little bit, but we solve the problem till they are satisfied. That is a, one of the important aspects NIFTEX and other uh, COD, COD, other institutions are doing. Then we have a training and capacity building. I, tell, I told you, you, need, you have a factory today and the where you will get your uh, people to work there in the food processing industry. You need training for them. No, you, you take all kinds of people. You see, I went to Parley once, you know, I took the student in the very big processing, biscuit manufacturing industry. I found out only hardly any graduate. All any graduate, all are trained people on 10th, 11th, 12th, like this. And he is the largest man business, man business manufacturer in the world. Parley. No, that kind of a training who will give? These are the institution's job to do that. And then the, the quality standard, what we were talking about. And now suppose there is a referral is a problem. There is a Maggie has some problem. Where it can it has to be referred? Institution only has to solve. It will go to court. Court judge will not know what it is. Then again, 
and he has to come back to here. Now we have a very good uh, uh, facility for quality testing. We have a, a NIFT. Our uh, I am telling about my institution. We have NIFL accredited food testing lab, and the charges are very minimal for all the industry. All for small people we are doing it. It is a FSS referral lab. When there is a problem, court sends the sample. We do this, and then we have a reference lab. Suppose some system, some some standard has to be developed. That has to be done by us. This is the job of this institution. This is the one of the stakeholders. This, their duty is this. They have to do better. Now, what we are doing, I am telling you, is, is not the best. It may be, it should be further improved. More such lab has to be created. And then, I am definitely telling you, everybody knows BMFB. The, the most of the ideas are crystallized for the, in the ministry from the NIFT. These are 10,000 pro projects. The stakeholder major capacity is taken over by us. Our victims are giving these trainings to all the states. All the states. recently Maharashtra, all the officers came for a one week training like this. Every state and the uh, capacity building, we are doing training and then we are giving training, uh, you know, with the incubation lines. They will see themselves and then they will become confident. And all the training material, DPR, we are uploaded all the DPR. Whatever you see in PMFP portal, all the DPRs are developed by us and we have uploaded. Whatever, you know, all the videos in multiple languages developed by different. Now, I am very proud to say that and, uh, and we will continue to continue to do for all the schemes, whatever the scheme we have, we will continue, continue to do that. Whoever is interested and NIFTM is open and uh, our gates are always open for both industry as well as the processes. No, I, I, will, I will never forget our financial institution, every program, we have a session for financial institution in every training program. How you can get the loan and in DPR, without DPR, we, the, our uh, financial will not give you money. We have given perfect DPR for 370 products in the, in, in the portal. No, I am very, what I am giving you a gist because the time is short. And uh, I assure uh, the, 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 the audience as well as who are listening from uh, uh, throughout the country, maybe overseas, uh, this is live streaming. And uh, NIFTM and all other institutions like CFTR or NIST or anybody, we are open uh, no, to all these FPO self-help groups and definitely we have a very soft corner for uh, people who are uh, uh, lower level process, small and medium process. No, 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 we are very soft. Even if there is a charge, we will try to circumvent and then try to support them. And uh, we will continue, continue to do that. Our Ministry of Food Processing uh, Industries has brought really such wonderful schemes uh, to support this system. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And I am thanking not only Mofi, because I am part of Mofi, but I thank our uh, Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. They are conducting this session. I thank you uh, very much. Our uh, uh, distinguished uh, DG manager and a distinguished speaker as well. All the distinguished speakers and thank you very much. And last one thing, I run up. We have a, a very good pavilion in all number 14. You come to Niftam, Tanja or Kumli also uh, besides after uh, Ministry of Food Processing Industry. Come and see our technologies, most of the things are uh, live demonstrated. I really invite you all and definitely the, the, the distinguished speaker should come with me. Because already the, it was opened by our secretary when I was sitting here. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, Rajneesh Ji, for uh, all the way coming from different parts of the country, spending their valuable time and sharing uh, you know, their experience and knowledge. Uh, I am uh, extremely grateful to uh, Dr. Krishna Reddy. Uh, he is a uh, director in marriage, Dr. Krishna Reddy. He coordinated all the you know, panelists and ensured that they reach in time and the uh, entire you know, the, uh, panel discussion took place uh, systematically. Again, I would like to thank the uh, Ministry of Food Processing and Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. But uh, my last word uh, before I conclude, are we forgetting one important player, key player, who can revolutionize uh, food processing industry? And that is uh, women. The woman uh, who is uh, the master in the kitchen, she has the patience 
Her kitchen itself is a daily food processing industry. She feed the family. We have 81 lakh self-help groups and uh, their organized platforms are available. Can we link food processing industry to these women? I think uh, that is one uh, area which we all should uh, you know, uh, take back home and try to implement it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for insightful information. I would like to express my gratitude to our esteemed speakers and our audience, without whom the session would not have been possible. Now I request Mr. Mukul to present a small gift to our distinguished guests. Yeah, exactly. 